Sorry, I'm late. Um, that, that's okay. Great. <laughs> okay, we're, we're glad you're here, Kevin. Okay, just a, a little little blur of the meeting. This meeting will be recorded in the air live. All attendees are muted upon entry. The host will unmute guests during the presentation hearing our citizens' comment agenda item. Questions during the meeting can be submitted in the chat to be addressed by the chair. Attendees not adhering to the guidelines may be put on hold or removed by the host. Um, what I would like to do is, if we can have a, a motion to pull a couple of things out of order, um, just to make sure we, we get those done. Um, mainly the library, you have two eligibility forms um, for the library and for the, the mobile station lot. Plus we have our, a letter from the town manager for that. Um, so moved. So we can, okay, second. 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 Okay, Josh, roll call. Tina. Yes. Carlton. Yes. Jean. Yes. Bill. Yes. Kevin. Kevin. Yes. Sorry, I was I was muted. Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. And okay, Gina, great. I think I think the library uh, director is going to try to join. Uh, I think I had some communication on that, and so let's try to take uh, the. Uh, mobile station out first. Okay, sounds good. Michael, do you want to speak on that? Charles, sure, I'll speak to that uh, a little bit. So I think in front of you, you've got two, uh, two items. One is an eligibility form for the uh, eminent domain of, uh, oh, I think it's 46 Summer Street. It's in any case, I think most people know it as the old mobile station. Um, it is, um, we have submitted the order of taking, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a secret at this point. This has been in the works now for probably a couple of years um, in several different forms of discussion. So that property um, obviously overgrown, the town uh, council is interested in seeing that uh, piece of property uh, restored specifically um, uh, create a park uh, park atmosphere in that location, ideally uh, sort of merging in <clears throat> and sort of uh, merging in with the uh, Flora Little Park, which is right next door to it. Um, we I've had many conversations with the council about um, creating that, you know, park setting, um, <clears throat> putting, um, you know, benches, um, tables, um, perhaps creating a, uh, a pad for a food truck uh on that location um i think we will if we can we will attempt to save the building and use that as sort of a covered uh area uh open open air but covered uh area uh under which people can you know play chess play checkers or uh or ping pong or whatever the case may be but at least a covered area um, and we will also try to uh, save the restroom uh, facilities as well uh, so that we've got um, some sort of uh, restroom facility um, available to folks. Um, that's that's in, in the ideal. So uh, we are about to get, engage a landscape architect um, to do a design um, and let us know what what that will uh, entail. Uh, in terms of the actual taking, um, we are uh, we will commission a. Um, an appraisal. We've done an appraisal twice on this piece of property uh, over the past, ooh, probably six years. Um, and we will do, uh, now this one will be a final appraisal uh, used for eminent domain purposes. Um, I will be coming to you, as, as I mentioned in the eligibility letter, I'll be coming to you to try to offset a portion of the cost of the taking. Um, we obviously, we know that the building portion, we can't ask CPC uh, funds for, at least for the taking. Um, and so we will be asking, um, if all goes well, we'll be asking for just the uh, amount necessary for the, the land portion of that, uh, 
of that taking. So that's, that is what the eligibility form is um, all about. We don't obviously don't have numbers yet. So we, we don't have the ability to fill out a uh, full application. As soon as, <clears throat> as soon as we get those numbers, uh, we'll do the full application um, and give you an idea of the full, uh, full plan. So that's, that is, um, that's essentially where that one stands. But I'm happy to answer questions about the eligibility uh, form if anybody has a question. I, my thought is that it's a, it's a great idea, um, especially where it will connect into the, uh, the other park. Um, good use of the property. Uh, I, as we talked about, and <clears throat> you mentioned the, the appraisal has, and the new appraisal, you're still in the process of commissioning the, the appraisal. Um, I think it's a great use. My thought um, is that it is eligible for the funds and um, especially where you're aware that it's, um, we couldn't pay UCPA funds to, for the eminent domain part. So you would need actually two, two appraisals. Um, I would like to see the, uh, the appraisal part at least approved tonight. Um, I don't think we need our application because that could come from our admin funds, but just looking for discussion, Calton. Yeah, I'd let, if anybody else has questions, something because I want to move that we put this um, a motion to, uh, that I'll speak to us shortly, but any questions would be okay now. Yeah, I, I have a question, um, sure. Michael. Uh, so this has been in the works for for a few years, and I'm and I'm so I when I got the letter um, for the application, I was very happy about it because I've always thought that was an eyesore. Um, the is is there a property? Is, it, is there's a house behind that mobile station? Correct. There's another right. property. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's a, a a structure back there. It's got uh, a number of uh, units within it, but it's essentially an apartment. Uh, apartment house. Yep. Oh, it is. Okay. I didn't know if it was apartment or if it was a, a private uh, home or something, but um, okay. Yeah. Cause whenever I drive by, I can always see it behind it. So I wasn't sure if it like, do those people have any stake in, in that property for the mobile station or is that owned by someone, someone different? No. So completely different ownership. Um, so the the, uh, the uh, mobile station property, which is a relatively small property, to tell you the truth, but <clears throat> that is owned by um, a gentleman that lives in Florida. It's got a fair amount of um, debt. Um, it's been mortgaged pretty much to the help, uh, which is not, quite frankly, not our issue uh, at all. But, um, but we know right. that from obviously public record. Um, there is an easement. Um, probably a 15 foot wide easement on the west side of that uh, piece of property that, that is there to access the, uh, those apartment, uh, apartments in the back. So that, that would remain and that, would, uh, that, would remain, that piece would remain paved uh, because uh, the e easement is not extinguished you know, simply because, because of an eminent domain taking. Is there any entryway or exit that 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 apartment complex uses through that mobile station, or do they go, they access the apartments at a different spot? The so the um, so the mobile so <clears throat> if you're facing the mobile station on the left hand side, there's an access, the only access to those apartments, that that building, that structure in the back that you're talking about. There's a there's an access uh, there. And so that would be, we'd have to respect that access. Um, we, couldn't, we couldn't create that strip of property. Uh, we couldn't you know, dig up the asphalt and plant trees and, and bushes and so forth in that location. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, you know, I think <clears throat> we would obviously be looking to close up um, the curb cuts uh, on summer for the, for the gas station and limit it, probably limit it to that access, uh, a curb cut for that access uh, back to the back to the apartment house. Okay. Uh, does that answer okay. the question? 
Yeah, I it, it with, does. Oh, Thank oh, you. Yeah, I agree with the prevailing sentiment that it's a great idea to uh, for the town to acquire the property and somehow join it to the little park. It'll make it look larger and uh, more inviting. Um, and I hope we can keep the structure of the of the gasoline station because, as I recall, <clears throat> the um, apartment building behind the property is very unattractive. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would want to try to um, to um, uh, shield that as best we could. Uh, and and the building will will do uh, will create some of that barrier, that visual barrier. Um, but it, it's a great idea, and I think we should move forward with it. Thank you. So I, yeah, th I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, a question, that apartment building in the back, what's the address of that? Oh, I'd have to, I can take a look. I'm not sure, Jean, I, I'll, I can take a look. The reason I was um, wondering is because I was trying to um, get the mobile station's address kind of, what not it, I had it, but 40 Summer Street in Bridgewater is being renovated for apartments. And I was trying to figure out where 40 was. Is this, so that that might very well be 40. Uh, it is a Summer Street address. It might, might very well be 40. Um, I, I, and that was, I, I think they've completed the work. Um, I know they've completed the work and they've, and they've occupied the, the apartments, but Carlton may know more. Because it was yeah, one, they, one bedroom that was, they were asking for 70, 1474. Well, there, there's, a, there's several projects going on in that area. That apartment was condemned and remodeled. Mm. Uh, so it's not quite as ugly as it was. That's good. There is where the old, uh, right next to uh, uh, Perry's daughter's uh, Summer Street Cafe, there is a building being renovated right now into apartments and commercial land. Yeah, but that's not the that's that not was 40. the forty summer. So, yeah. and I think there might be something on the east side that may be getting done. Mm, yeah. Okay. Or it may be the uh, uh, the old Bogarts. Sorry. No, it wasn't. At Bogarts is up higher, lower number, because that's right. going good. Right. Bogarts, it, it, it does. It looks nice. That's a, a low number, too. Oh, as Jean said. Yeah. Is it, okay. They're, they're right. yeah, yeah, I have some more. I, I, sure. I'm going to have it after I make the motion. I'd like to do a two part motion. I move to that the CPC determine that this property is eligible for open space acquisition. And the second part of that motion is, is that we fund through our administrative account, the uh, full cost of the, um, I wanna say assessment. Uh, appraisal. 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 Appraisal, thank you. That's my motion. Second, I'll second that. Okay, so I'd like to discuss slightly more. Sure. Um, we did reach out to the coalition and they, he, uh, Stuart sent back some really good information, which I believe, Michael, we sent to you. Is that correct? Yes. Um, okay, I, 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 did it come from Gina? Yes. Gina just or so me, I look for sure it. Which. Yep. Okay. But, okay. but so I'll just briefly go over that because the appraisal requires that we have two appraisals, one and two maps, one with the building and one without the building, because that way the appraisal will be able to pay for the open space amount and know what it is. And the full appraised amount will be whatever the town has to pick up. So, so that's one of the things. Uh, so basically, uh, if we do the entire possible by, uh, eminent domain through CPC, the building has to be torn down immediately. So that's why I'm really requesting that we separate and have two appraisals so we can actually see the money that CPC can uh, pay for. Uh -huh. uh, the, the this, building, this, that. this type of thing has been done before for CPA for takings, 
but he was pretty firm. And if you don't have that, did you say, Michael, you just said you had it? No, I do, uh, yeah, I do have that. I did read that. I okay. wasn't quite sure. So, so the motion is asking for the double appraisal. It's also saying it is eligible for open space. The other thing that I would say in discussion is that since you're forming, you have a landscape architect that you're intending to hire, uh, please appoint one of the BIA members, either, well, there are at least two BIA members on this panel, uh, myself, as well as, as um, uh, where'd you go? Phil, oh. Mr. Smith, <laughs> Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. So one or two of us um, uh, should be appointed to that, including the consideration of the chair of the BIA, Marilee Hunt. Um, and we're looking forward to that because quite frankly, I think you've had discussions with the town clerk, uh, Michael, and BIA is quite interested in making sure that the two properties complement each other and yeah. supplement at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so, so everybody else knows that that would be a wonderful area if the apartment complexes that are planned for downtown Broad Street ever come into play, that will be a great place to, to, for, for various type functions to happen, those kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, so th that's, that's my comment on, on the, uh, 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 propose, uh, the, amend, uh, the motion. I'll get it out. If, if we're going to, sorry, if we're requesting two, uh, uh, two appraisals Will the amount of money requested from um, the town manager be sufficient for that or not? I, th I think it will. The, um, you know, as I mentioned, we've had two appraisals done in the past. So this is uh, essentially updating that. So I don't think, I think certainly this uh, will be plenty enough to cover uh, the two because one side of it is essentially just, well, both sides is essentially an update. But, but as Carlton says, we need to sort of split the appraisal in two. Um, so, so easily done. Okay. Right. I would, I would clarify what, what Carlton said. He said two appraisals. One, the parcel with the building. The second, the parcel without. I think, I don't have a steward's letter email handy right here, but I believe he said a, an appraisal, two maps, one of just the building. I'm Italian, I talk with my hands. So <laughs> one of just the building piece and the other one is the parcel with that cut out on it. Um, well, so what he said is two maps, one with and one without. And then the appraisal will address it with and it without. And he has to do best and best in, uh, what is the right word? If, uh, Highest and best use. Thank you very much. You, you got your head, my brain is addled right now. Highest and best, regardless, and then we would pay, uh, do that. Uh, enough. I'll shut up. I I'm kind of I, I'm surprised that the uh, the building needs to be taken down in order for it to be considered open. I mean, I can't, I mean, I, I I get where it's coming from, but that's that's no, no. um that's different. You you misunderstood me, I believe. It, if it is all open space and paid for by CPC into the entire taking is paid for by CPC, the building must come down. If it's not entirely paid by CPC, we only pay for the land, not the building. Got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just looking at Stuart's email and he said, uh, a CPC application to fund only the open space portion of the land taking. The town would need to draw a map of the parcel and split it into two pieces on paper, one parcel with the building, a second parcel containing the, the rest land. of the open space. Um, right. I guess that Correct. could be interpreted either way. But well, the, appraisals well, well, can, the appraisers can figure it out. We need yeah. to have two different amounts of money Correct. So the town and can come back with a with a uh, application. Correct. So I move the question. Correct. Um, are there okay. any so are there any environmental concerns about the property? Do we know about that yet? Uh, we uh, do. We know that um, uh, we know that the uh, property uh, the tanks were removed. We know the tanks were removed, and we know that the property went through a twenty one for phase one twenty one e process, which is essentially an environmental. 
Excellent. review. So Good. Um, I can tell you there is always, uh, you know, anytime you do this, there's always a slight risk that, that there is going to be something there. Um, if it comes to pass, uh, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a position to have to, to deal with that, quite frankly, and, and we have access to grant funding that will Good. help us, uh, can help us do a cleanup if, if we run into a, a problem. So, but that's a good, that's a very good question. Um, and that's, you know, really of all the issues involved in the taking, that's really our only significant issue. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the oil sump place that's in the building could have some issues. But the other thing I forgot to say, and I apologize, we have, uh, I, I have a, uh, been doing some budgeting stuff. And right now the uh, open space has 200, Eighty thousand dollars in it, so we and and the uh, other funds are well covered, so we can afford to uh, pay for both the appraisal and out of admin. Admin has forty six thousand roughly or thirty thousand, uh, and so we have plenty of money uh, in in uh, our coffers. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Any more discussion? If something does come up. Uh, with an environmental issue that needs to be addressed before it can be used as open space or a public use like we want it to be. Uh, will the owner have to cover any, any of that before it's, before it's uh, handed over to the town using CPC funds? Uh, that's, that's actually a very good question. So there is, uh, within environmental laws, there, there are essentially, you know, sort of uh, responsibility is shared throughout the chain of title. If you can document when when a hazard was created, you know you can go back to that point and you can you can look for a recovery during that, you know throughout that chain of title. Um, in this case, you know, we're, as a practical matter, are we going to go back, you know, to the the owner that was prior to the owner that was prior? Um, yeah. it's probably you know that that owner is probably deceased. Um, if, if it was insured as it should have been insured, you've got some recourse there, but, uh, you know, quite frankly, in, in this scenario, we never bank on, on, you know, getting, um, funding for a cleanup from outside sources. We, we plan sort of worst case scenario. And that is what if we have to confront that, that, uh, possibility and we have to clean it up, uh, which is the way we should approach it. Um, and so we know that we have access to grant funding through the state's, uh, you know, state funding. Um, we've done an, about as much due diligence as we can. We know, for instance, <clears throat> that the uh, BIA has sunk a well on the Flora Little property in order to provide, I believe, irrigation. Um, that well has been tested and is perfectly clean. So, so we are pretty confident that to the extent that there is any um, hazard on that site, it's, it would be very well contained, um, it, which means very easily taken care of. Fair enough. I imagine yeah. tracking down the, the owner is, 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 is going to be a tricky, that might, might be a tough, that might, that might be a, uh, a big ask because I, I imagine it might be a little convoluted to find someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My last okay. question is, what's the size of the property? Is it half an acre, a quarter of an acre, or maybe we know the square footage? The size of the property, and I apologize, I should know this right off the top of my head. Um, I think it's at least 10,000 square feet. but So it's less than a quarter of an acre, about a quarter of an acre. It's 19, uh, I believe it's 19,000 square feet, 19,037 square feet. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah, it's no, that's bigger than I thought it was. Good, good. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, if there's no more discussion, we'll move the question, move the, the motion. Um, we have a second, Josh, roll call. To, does anybody want Carlton's two-part motion to read? Okay. Uh, nope, I remember, I remember it. Yep. Okay, it. good. Thank it. you. Um, okay, Josh, vote. Yeah. Yes. Carlton? Yes. Jean? Yes. Bill? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Thank you. The motion is approved. Great. Thank you. 
Um, Michael, I will just give you something like sign this um, eligibility form and also something saying that we officially approved the, um, the appraisal. And once you get more information, you can do the complete application. That's perfect. And I, I just want to remind the committee, I know you all know, but just in the, we ask for what we think, uh, you know, a healthy amount of money for the appraisal. Uh, we ask for what we think it will, will be. We ask for a little bit more than we think it will be. So to the extent that that's not spent, it stays in the admin account. So you don't have to worry about, right. you know, taking any Good. action to return money that, that wasn't spent. So I just Good. want to make sure you know Thank that. you. Great. Thank you. Thank I you. don't think we have Jed here, but there is somebody that it just says iPad. So I'm not sure who that is. Um, but if we can jump back while Michael's still here, um, just for an update on the Memorial Building. Uh, Jed, we can't do that because we took out, uh, out of order both of the uh, applications. We, we can take out of order what well, we already took out of order with another motion. <laughs> or two or three. <laughs> okay. I'm just sorry. trying to I'm, kill I'm all the, the birds with oh. one stone. So people, unless Michael wants to stay on for a bit. No, I, I, I would move that we take up the memorial building under old business. Okay, second. A second. Okay. Josh, roll call. Gina. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Jean. Yes. Bill. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay, great. Michael, do you want to give us an update on the memorial building? While you're Absolutely. Here? So I think uh, the last uh, that everybody knew, uh, we were we had gotten uh, bids back. Um, not shockingly, they uh, exceeded uh, our estimates. You know, I think that's the nature right now of, of uh, construction. The low bid um, came in a couple of hundred, I'll use round figures because I don't have it right in front of me, came in a couple of hundred thousand dollars more than we had estimated. We went to the um, council, asked for, well, I should back up. So it came in a couple hundred thousand dollars over um, estimate. The next lowest bid came in over $500,000 over and it Ooh. went right on up. Um, the high bid was, I think, you know, at least, you know, probably reaching close to a million dollars more than an estimate. So, so we uh, <clears throat> spoke with the low bidder. The low bidder's got a very good uh, track record, has done a fair amount of work for Bridgewater State, uh, ironically, so uh, knows the area pretty well. Uh, we went back to the council and requested additional funding um, through uh, three different sources. Council voted that on Tuesday. So uh, we have a fully funded project. Uh, I was able to sign the contracts. Um, well, let me step back. So we have a fully funded project and we've got a very healthy contingency, um, which was uh, important at this stage, at least. Hopefully we won't have to touch it, um, but uh, we did. Uh, I was able to sign the contracts. We've got um, we've got a uh, an initial uh, kickoff meeting, I believe, early next week, and then uh, I would expect that we will see some activity there, um, either the week after that uh, or early on the week after that. So, so the project uh, is about to get underway. Um, the building has been cleaned out um, for the most part, and. Um, and so it's ready for uh, ready for them to come in and, and do the work. So that's basically where it stands. Um, I'm happy that we didn't have to cut uh, any components of it because I think a lot of uh, most of the stuff that was going into that building really, I mean, isn't uh, anything more than making sure that the building, you know, is 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 good and tight and um, solid, and then uh, ac uh, accessible. Um, and uh, and really, that's. Those are the major components of it, quite frankly. So, so there was really not a whole lot of place to begin to cut uh, cut the program. So, so that's where we stand. Great, thank you. Any questions for Michael or comments on the memorial building? I have I have a question, Michael. The uh, recommendation 
in the legislation that awarded the $350,000 indicates that that money cannot be released until such time as we have a maintenance plan for the building. So hopefully that will be in the works shortly. That is actually, that has been in the works and, and Chris Hartman's been working on a, a more comprehensive maintenance plan. Um, I, I believe he's uh, sort of inputting, that's one of the first pieces that he's input into this new uh, sort of building maintenance uh, software program that we've purchased. So, uh, so the committee will definitely be getting that. Okay. Um, and it should be quite robust, quite frankly. Thank you. The second of three um, is the the money we gave was strictly for the access to the building. It did not include any money for uh, access in the uh, restaurant restrooms, et cetera, down in the basement. Uh, that was not part of what we approved to send forward. How are you going to handle that? Um, so. I think you mean from an accounting perspective or well from a funding perspective yeah <clears throat> so so we have um i'll have to go back and look and see how the the bid documents work but i think we've got you know within the bid document i think we've we can establish exactly what uh pieces of that building are costing what well, quite frankly one of the reasons we decided made the decision not to come back to cpc to look for the additional funding the additional overages was that we just you know, we knew what you were willing to fund and um, and we just didn't see that we could find, you know, really good solid components, pieces of that work uh, over and above what you'd already given that we're gonna be eligible for CPC funds. So um, so we didn't, you know, we just made the decision not to, not to try to come back and, you know, concoct a, another, you know, funding uh, application around just bits and pieces. So, um, but, but I'll, I'll take a look at the, at the bid documents. Cause we did ask, you know, for sort of unit, you know, within the bid doc, you always get, or within the response, you always get, um, you know, the cost of the specific parts of the project. So, so we'll, we'll, I'll get that. And, and we and, can, and the other piece is the archival area, you know, for historic archival. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that that was on the table. So, and, and quite frankly, if you find you have to, uh, send in a modification. Uh, the third thing is uh, we have a, and I always forget, it's not a grant agreement, but it's a, a, a document that I don't know if you've seen it. We've drafted the, uh, Gina, help me out. What's it called? Yeah, the award letter. Award letter. We've drafted an award letter. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but uh, I put it together, not knowing what exactly the costs were and that kind of thing. Okay, once we have the costs, we can just insert those. Um and get it off to him. So let me let me give you, so I'll forward. Um, so just if I could ask Carlton, was the uh, was this sort of a, 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 an award letter template or was this specific to no, the it's, it's Memorial specific, Building? It's specific to the Memorial Building. Um, I took the template that you and the attorney uh, Rollins had worked out for the C, uh, SCC church. I modified well, that was for independent. I, I basically took information from one document we had and sent it, uh, edited it, and if sent it. I made it specific. I'll leave it at that. Okay. No, nope, that, okay, that makes sense. If you don't have it, let me know and I'll we'll get it off to you. All right. Well, I will. I'll get you the breakdown um, okay. on the on the cost of different components. And again, the only reason we're doing is that because we have under under our uh, designation as a uh, ministerial committee, we had, do have an obligation to monitor the uh, tasks that we are funding. Nope, nope, that's a good point. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, and so I, I'll get you the numbers for uh, the bid numbers and also the. Um, I just went out of my head. The breakdown that we're funding? No, the uh, maintenance plan. Maintenance plan, I'm sorry. Sure. Yep, okay. Now I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's that time of night where my brain starts to shut down. It's like a computer. A piece of it shuts down, then another piece of it shuts down. And pretty soon yeah, I just close my eyes. <laughs> mine usually just stops. And plus it gets dark at six o'clock now, so it's, it makes it even more... 
Yeah. yeah. It's going to get dark even earlier this after this weekend. Monday night, it's going to get worse. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. There's Thank no you. more questions for, for Michael and uh, Memorial Building. Um, I guess we're back to the library. Well, I, I will if um, I can. Uh, honestly, I can't speak for Jed, so I'm. I don't see him on. I don't know if he's on or not. Um, but I will. Uh, unless you need me for something else, I will get out of your hair. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, do, do, the only thing, Michael, we just need to get final input on the uh, some of the documents that we're putting together, the policies and procedures document. I think we're waiting for finance department comments, and otherwise, it's pretty much done. Okay, right. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. All right, I will check and see where that is. Uh, and you're just waiting. You're pretty sure it's just finance, right? Right. Yes, because you and um, Jennifer had commented on it. All right. right. I don't think you need to need to see the application and instructions again because you and Jennifer had already commented on that. Yeah, those look good. Yeah, so we Calton and I made the uh, made the update, so that should be set. In the grant agreement template and award letter template, have you seen those or not? I I don't know that I have actually. Okay. But I, okay. I mean if out. I'll look you, back to it to see what I sent you. Yeah, if you if you show if you show me the you know the memorial building one, I'll get a sense of the template at least. You know. Okay. okay. Sound, right. Sounds good. Um, thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Michael. It was a, yeah, a pleasure to thanks, have Mike. you. Have you well, here? Anytime. Here, I can feel myself shutting down now. Okay. Well, all right. Thanks. All okay. Right. Thank well. you. Okay, have a good night. Okay, yeah. Um, we don't have Jed here yet. I know we had said that we would take that out of order. No, I let's just, let, Gina, let's just go back up to the agenda because if Jed's going to join, maybe he'll join later. I don't know what, the, what he's at, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, We'll go through this as, as quick as we can, because as I said, I hope we have people on here from our committee that it wasn't the best night for them, but they're here. Well, okay. let me ask, let me ask it again, then. Does anybody need to leave this meeting uh, early uh, of the committee? Uh, by eight, not for me. By, by eight o'clock. Oh, OK. So we have Jane for a little bit. Well, okay. let's okay okay so okay so we'll go back up to the start um cheers announcements um we didn't have our a recent meeting with the town manager but i find them very helpful um to keep us on track with what they're doing what the town's doing the council the town manager um and i think it keeps michael informed of what we're doing so We've had two so far. I'd like to set up another one um, at some point. Uh, it's getting crazy with the holidays, so maybe after, but to set that up. Um, the only other announcement I have is Joan Newmeister, who is the Housing Authority representative, has resigned from CPC as of October 31st. Um, She's requested the Housing Authority to appoint somebody as soon as possible. Um, I've talked to Michael on it. He's going to keep on it too, um, which makes it all that much more important for us to make sure we get to meetings because we still have to have five. Um, we have nine members all together, but we're with Joan gone plus the Affordable Housing Trust has never had anybody. Um, at least as far as I can remember. Um, so we're down two people. So it's important that we all try to make meetings. And I appreciate everybody for the time they put into this and coming to our meetings. Um, of course. Citizens. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, oh, no, sorry. I'm, I'll shut up now, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, 
citizens open forum? Any citizens here? Like to make comments? Okay, hearing none, <laughs> we'll move on. Approval of minutes for September 22nd. Josh sent them out last week. Motion, I I'm, I'm, uh, move to accept. I, I second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing on Josh, vote. Gina? Yes. Carlton? Yes. Gene? Yes. Bill? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Thank you, the motion was approved. Okay, great, thank you. Um, you have the financial reports. It's actually the latest that you got was September. Um, more than August, it was the September ones. Um, we were thinking we were just going to get August and they surprised us and said, said September. Um, you know, Gina, the only question I have is on the expense budget to actual. And if you look at the administrative expenses, booze, we had a budget of 3000 and it says it hasn't been paid yet, but I remember we voted to have that uh, paid. I don't know what the number was, but uh, I don't know if the town's paid that or not. Okay, I, I'm just going back, hold on. I had that yeah. open. And this is as of September 30th, so they may have paid it in, in October, but. Right. Um, but I, my only point is we need to check on that, make sure it's happened. Okay, hold on, I'm just opening it again. As I said, I had it open and I, I closed it to go to the other email. Oh. Well, I'm reading right from the report, so. Right, I just wanna make sure I'm looking at the same thing. Okay, of course I went to the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, it's under, what is it again? Expense budget to actual? It's under expense budget to actual 93021 okay. administrative 573000 administrative expenses dues and it shows we budgeted 3000 and we still have 3000 but i if i recall we voted to send the money to the coalition i just want to check on it okay i i'll double check that because i'm sure it was paid otherwise stuart and i can't remember his the other well, guy there and, and if it was paid in last fiscal year, that's that's my bad, but I just need to make sure. Right, okay, I'll double check that. Great, thank you. Um, okay, the next thing, part of the financial reports, when we put our budget together last spring, I'm trying to find Zoom again, here we go. Um, when we put our budget together last spring, we put it together based on the finance director's recommendations and predictions. Um, we actually thought we would get a lot more from the state, which we ended up getting. Um, Tony Salmonti, the finance director, tends to, to do his predictions low. Um, but he also told us that we could go back in mid-year to look at it again. And if we want to move money, we can. So we would like to do that at our next meeting. Um, and I can invite Tony to come too. So if we need any guidance on what to do or how to do it, he can help us out. And just Gina, so you know, I've been working very hard for the last week trying to understand and prep for that meeting. So I've, I've done quite a bit of work and we'll have recommendations for the committee and whenever we meet next. Okay, great. Was I sending you something on you had mentioned that you needed something. I don't remember. Okay, I can't either. Um, okay, so that'll be at our next meeting. Okay, any other questions on the financial sheets? Okay, good. Old business project updates, Central Square, Congregational Church Deed Restriction and Grant. I do have an answer from Michael Dutton in the finance department. I, we had the question at the last meeting, how to pay 
Brian Pfeiffer for the work that, for his data and information he had already compiled. Um, I want to say it was to the tune of like $3,900 um, in change. Um, Barbara Gordon can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh -huh. The question was if the church should pay Brian that 39 whatever 39 and change get reimbursed by the town if the town could pay it directly i did get an answer um we're technically we're not paying him for his services now we're just paying him for a packet of information that he has um the town can pay him directly okay I think that, it was something like thirty-seven ninety, something like that. I don't remember the exact. Okay, price. I'm I'm looking yeah. back. I have thirty-nine, thirty-seven, but okay, I All might right. have. That sounds right too. So how how soon will that be paid? Um, we have to get a bill from Brian. Um, when we get the bill, um. Who's, then who's we can gonna pay Who's it. gonna request the in, the invoice sent to the town? Barbara, can you request that? I would be happy to request it. And I have the paper in my hand now. It's 39.37 and 50 cents. Hey, I had yeah. it right. Yes, you got it. I got the letter right with me. Yes, I'll request it and tell them that the town is going to um, pay. I'll request the invoice. And should I tell them that the town is paying the invoice? I'm wondering who will acquire then the the information. I've already have it. Well, oh, so you already have that all his information. Now he's just looking to get paid for it. Yes, I do have it, but I I'm I'm not allowed to use it until he's paid okay. for. It. As okay. soon as it's if, paid for, it's as soon as it's paid for. You can send it to your other consultant. Yeah. Uh, okay. If, so it's important to expedite this because the town cycles a little slow. And it yep, probably should be sent directly to the, to, uh, I think it should be sent to Gina and then she would forward it to the town for payment. Right. Okay. Do you have an invoice from him, Barbara, or just the packet? No, I don't have an invoice. Okay. If you can um, ask him to send it to either to me and copy you or send it to you and copy me. Okay. And as soon as I get it, I will get it to the because the town manager has to sign it and I think that according to the finance office but I'll double check with with Michael and Laurie as soon as I get the invoice and we'll get it in to get paid okay and, and, and then, then we'll communicate when it's paid so you can send that documentation right okay. and I think I will let um the woman Virginia Adams in Rhode Island know what we're doing mm-hmm Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I had a couple, uh, three things to ask of you. Sure. Um, number one is the, what we just answered. Um, number two is Gina. I've, I've asked you a couple of times if I could have a copy of the draft grant agreement that you wrote up. Oh, not, okay. I, yeah. I still don't have that. Okay. Okay, and then the last question I have to ask you is one that I ask at every meeting, you're probably tired of hearing it, but when the deed restriction is finalized and we have only um, asked for phase one money for this project, is, is that gonna be written so that it covers the entire exterior envelope of the church, phase two and three? We're, we're only guessing that we'll be approved for phase two and three. I mean, we haven't put in for it, but with the grant agreement, with the grant deed restriction being written up, we would like it to cover all three phases. Okay. Um, Carlton, did we, we asked Michael that, not last the meeting. Deed, the him, deed correct? restriction covers the entire building. Okay. Regardless of phase. Okay. Okay. And, they, can't, um, they can't piecemeal it out in terms of the steeple. So it will cover the entire building is what I understand. Okay, so you, you do know our intentions, of course, to put in for phase two and three. And we're just hopeful that of course, that will be approved for those phases also, where a deed restriction is a big, um, I don't know, event, but it's a big piece of action for us to take. You wouldn't have to pay for another deed restriction. 
That's why it covers the whole building. Okay. Right. Uh, I think their question had been, if per chance CPC doesn't approve our phase two and or phase three, that the restriction covers work that they're doing themselves. Um, was that right, Barbara or Gordon? Did I say that right? Well, the thing is, um, with the prices and everything today, we don't know if we'd be able to go proceed with phase two and phase three. Right. And, right. and you know, I've, I'm just doing construction here at my own house. And within one year, one small project went up $10,000. So yeah, it's crazy. we all know, you know, the price of materials and trying to get them is another mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that is so, that. And I have to get you the draft grant agreement. Yes, um, please. That would we be great. Answered, we answered the question about the payment. Yes. Okay. Anything else? N not unless, go I know Gordon's at the meeting. Gordon, do you have, did I miss anything? Is Gordon you're muted? muted? Gordon, you're muted. Gordon, you're muted if you have something to add. You just have to unmute. There you are. Uh, I just want to point out with the deed restriction covering the whole church, if later on we have damage to one of our windows and we have to repair them, we have to do them in accordance with the historical requirements. And if we don't have the money, then we're not going to be able to do that. So we're setting ourselves right up the, off the bat to saying we have a complication because we can't do that. So I, I, I really find it hard that you give us the whole church, I, but I don't know how you can do it otherwise. Uh, but somehow we've got to tie it in so that if, if we're not able to repair the church, uh, we don't have to do it in accordance with the historical requirements. We'd love to, of course, mm -hmm. but if we're not able to. I, I think that gets into the legal world and I have not going to touch that. Right. We, we can pass that by the town manager again and ask him to, to pass it by attorney Rollins, just to make sure, because well, I see what it, you're saying. Well, I mean, yeah, because it gets to the point where the, the, the new deed restriction does say, you know, uh, the obligation, if we don't need it, uh, then from a legal standpoint, that even then the church is paying for the legal people to get us out of the problem. Uh, let, let me suggest that you send us a letter requesting with your specific question, a specific paper, and then we will forward it to the town attorney for his opinion. I mm -hmm. think that's the most effective way to handle it. Yeah, good idea. It would be interesting if we could find out if the deed restriction has ever been rescinded by a town because of circumstances similar to uh, what uh, Barbara uh, perhaps envisions down the road. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that, obviously, but uh, it's- if, if, if I think the example here of a single window being broken and needing to be restored uh, I suspect a request to us might be appropriate for that single mm -hmm. cost. Good point. But I, I, we'd have to go through the process. Uh, right. But I, I was thinking if uh, phases two and three are not funded or funded adequately, um, but yet the deed restriction has been imposed because of the work on the steeple, uh, have there ever been instances of a town rescinding the deed restriction and turning the property back over to the church in, in totality? Uh, I, I can't answer that, but my thought is that something would have to be paid back to the town for the deed, possibly for the deed restriction. Um, we're for just, it just a thought. I, that's a very good I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that's a question to include in this letter that uh, hopefully that the, the church will send. Just if question one is 
as you said, uh, what, what about it? And then the question too is, has the deed restriction ever been uh, rescinded? And if so, how does it, how does it affect CPA uh, and the church? Right. Good, good point. Um, so Gordon or Barbara, one of you are jointly can put together that those questions and ship them off to me. I think that we'll do it together. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll get it off to you, Gina. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. While while we're on the church, I unfortunately couldn't make the dinner. Um, I've heard it was very good, very successful. Um, so I'm glad to glad to hear that. Thank oh, you. I forgot, it, to go, I forgot to go to that one. Oh man. <laughs> well, I you totally missed forgot. it. <laughs> it was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> we great. had 46 uh, people attend. That's great. And, yeah, great. and I booked the hall for 30 and 46 attended. So that was really it was wonderful. It was a great evening. Everyone needed to have some kind of a celebration like that. Great. Great. Oh, that's great. Glad, glad yeah. it went well for you. Okay, any other questions from? Just a, a comment. I'd just like to suggest that I was talking with a, a food pantry, Jack Melcher. Uh, if you know anyone that's going to need turkeys over Thanksgiving, they should get to Jack Melcher if they can. Okay. okay. Is that okay. at the Bridgewater uh, food, food pantry? So we're at the churches. Oh, is that the church? Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Great. Okay, thank you, Gordon, for that. Um, okay, moving on. The pickleball courts, and I can't give an update on that. Last I knew uh, the fencing was done, but I haven't talked to Charlie Simons. Um, I reached out to him and didn't get a call back. Um, I think he was with the storm and all that has been out straight, but it was, it was going good. So hopefully, hopefully it still is. Um, okay, McHale Wayne School is coming along great. Some of us went to the, the groundbreaking. Um, it was very, very nice. Um, Dead, well, groundbreaking. I was going to say dedication. It really wasn't dedication. The, the groundbreaking uh, is coming up long. Good. Uh, if you you ride by, you can you can see they're, they're working on the front building, but there's more so on the the back building. The the addition. Um, for myself, it was it was kind of different walking through the building that. I had gone to school for four years to first grade to fourth grade, um, walking through my first year grade classroom, the cafeteria. So that was that was interesting, but it's the project is coming along very good. Uh, anything on that? Okay, hearing that um, Hanson's Farm. We have Eileen's here and. Janet and uh, I believe Bob, is Bob here? There's one that says Hanson Farm that's just a phone. I think that might be Bob. That's definitely Bob. That okay. would be Bob, but he doesn't have access to be able to talk. Um, okay, but he so. can hear us. Yes. Okay. Um, I thought he um, had a smartphone now. This is okay. Eileen, do you want me to give an update? Sure. Please. Okay, so um, just to you know, recall where we were on this, the, your last meeting on 922 was the day a number of us went out to the site visit at the mm -hmm. farm. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very informative. And um, unfortunately, the Scott McFadden from Wildlands Trust was not able to be there because we're interested in working with them, we hope, on, on figuring out how to go through this process. Um, he was sick, so he couldn't come. And Bob was unavailable until after the wedding, uh, the family wedding on the 23rd. So I contacted Scott McFadden shortly after the site visit and he gave me some dates in November um, when Bob said he would be available. But then 
Bob wasn't available those dates. He's going to Maine for, I don't know, a week or 10 days. I don't remember. So I've been back to Scott, who then didn't get in touch with me for some time. But I just yesterday was able to set up um, a date of November 29th for Scott to come to the farm and meet with Bob. Um, Bob, I hope you heard that. I spoke with Marianne yesterday, wrote it all down for her. She said she was put it on the calendar. Um, and then if we, if anything happens on the 29th, we'll meet on December 1st. So I wanted to make sure we had a backup date so this doesn't get put off any further. Um, so that's that's about it. That's all I really have to report. Um, the other thing I was interested in, but I, I know you're gonna get to it later in your agenda is whether the application form is ready to whether I can, we, we can start looking at that, whether you've done all the work on it that needs to be done or whether it's mm -hmm. still in process. We, we can send that off to you. Okay, all right. I'm, yeah. I'm, cur I have not, I, I'm curious to see what it looks like at this point. I don't, I haven't looked at it before in any detail, right. so. But I will. And, um, and Bob, when I talked with, um, I did see Bob sometime within, mm -hmm. uh, within the last couple of weeks and he said they would be getting the rest of the survey done also. So. One of, the, one of the things that we need to have is an appraisal uh, that is, uh, what were the words that Michael used? Best in something. Anyway, we have to have an appraisal so we understand what the uh, uh, highest and best use right. of the land yeah. is. So that's something that needs to be happening fairly soon. Yeah, and I know Michael was going to be taking care of that. I'll, I'll, I haven't had any words with him about this, any conversation. So, well, I would, I would suggest that you might uh, request something from yeah. the CTA. Can um, this is Janet Hansen? Can I say something? Bob just related yeah. to me. Yeah, uh, we're kind of doing a go between. Um, on the days that they would mention uh, the 29th and the December 1st, those are the days that they're unloading Christmas trees. Ugh. So it'd be a, a tad busy. <laughs> yeah, very busy. <laughs> well, all right, I'll just get back in touch with Bob, I guess. Okay. Great. Thank you, Eileen. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so that, that sounds good. Anything else on Hanson's farm? Um, when it's Eileen, when this is rescheduled between Scott McFadden and and Bob, is that also open to any CPC members that couldn't make the other one? Uh, I haven't given that any thought. I you know it, I don't know. At this point, I'll just okay. So. I don't know if don't anybody know. would want to, but just a thought. Yeah. Um, can I say something else? Sure. Um, Bob did say, but you never know. I know from farm life, it's not necessarily written in stone, but he thought that it should be done by noon as far as unloading trees. So just if there's no other option, but get in touch with Bob, I guess. Okay. All right. Sorry, he doesn't. Okay. He, can't, he can't communicate, so... Uh, yeah, I'm in the go between. Are you guys in the same room? No, I'm actually working. I'm still at work, so <laughs> I'm I'm watching while I'm at work, and he's at he must be at the farm. I don't I don't know. <laughs> so we're not in the, in the same town. <laughs> oh well, okay. You're doing a great job between the he's, two of you. Oh, he's texting great. me. I'm texting him. So I, I, how was the how was the wedding? It was very nice. It looked like oh, a good. nice day. I rode by and I saw yeah, the turned, and I thought, oh, the wedding's today. Turned out to be very nice weekend. So that's great. That's yeah. great. I'm glad. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great to hear. Yep. Anything else on Hanson's? I guess I'm, well, I, well, I've got Bob. If Bob can hear me, <laughs> this is Eileen. Bob, maybe you could yeah. give me a call. Or send me an email. I know he can't respond, but I and you you have I know you have our number, so that might be helpful because it's hard for me to catch you at the farm, and I and it seems like the messages from that I leave with Marianne aren't getting through. So okay, good. Okay, and Janet, in case Bob didn't hear that, you can you could just remind him. Yeah. 
Okay. okay. Great. Okay, if nothing else for on that, um, we've done all the project updates, document updates, quickly policies and procedures, as we said, that's just waiting for the finance director's input. Um, we've updated from things that Jennifer Burke, who she got married, I can never remember her name, but was Jennifer Burke. Um, and Michael had their comments. So we've incorporated those into the, the document. We're just waiting for the, the finance director. Uh, application, application instructions are set. Um, yeah. you know, Josh, I have a can I ask a question of the committee? Sure. I went through the process of separating the actual form without directions and okay. made a separate docket document with the directions on how to fill it out right should i have done that or is there a preference in terms of the document should we keep the instructions within the the application or have an external document i my preference is to have two documents one that's just the instructions so somebody's not printing out I don't know, an extra seven or eight pages for the application. So the application is self-contained, but the instructions are separate. That That's my thought. Um, any other thoughts from CPC folks? The if way we don't hear any, if I don't hear any, I'll say I'm, I'm done with the work. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds good. Um, the way it was in the past is it was all one document. Um, we kind of thought if it's two separate ones or somebody can just take the application without, and plus when it's emailed to us, we're not getting all the instructions and everything too. We're just getting the application itself. Um, okay. I kind of like, we... it. Kinda like it when it's one, one you like email it as one? one as one. That's just my, that's just my opinion. Okay. Um, anybody else? I like two. Being married, Steve, we got, we have everybody here now. I like two documents. Okay. Me too. Thanks, Harry. Jean, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you can print off the form and then you can read it online. Yep. I, I agree. Uh, who's left, Steve? I thought it was just Steve. Okay, that, that's the plan is these things will be all up online as soon as we finalize them that people can access yep. them. Josh, it looks like um, if we get you the application that you can just put it into a PDF and put it, the application itself, we never figured out how to do the, the PDF that, that gives more lines, um, the PDF writable. But if you could at least get it Get it up there for us. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Okay. Um, okay, that sounds good. Um, okay, and Carlton has has worked hard on the grant agreement template and the award letter. You just have to make sure that Michael has seen those. Um, Okay, McElwain School payment under old business. Uh, yeah, I, I brought that up. I, I thought the $135,000 that was being carried in one of the finance reports was that they weren't going to access, access that money, but I've been informed that they will. They had accessed all the other money, but that $135,000 will be or may have already been accessed. So okay. that, that was my question. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, any other old business? Okay, hearing none. Um, committee liaison reports. Okay, if anybody has anything from, from the committees, um, I already said for Park and Rec, the pickleball courts. But okay. Um I was just running the conservation meeting and we uh, started the application for the new sewage treatment plant on Morris Ave. That's what took so long. Okay. 
does that mean there will be an expansion of the uh, storage uh, for residents? No, that's just the treatment plan itself because they, oh. it has an EPA fine that they have to uh, redo the plant and make it better. <laughs> I see. <laughs> there, there will be down the road a lot more money required to upgrade the plant, but yeah. this this is simply to get the drinking water, um, if I'm correct, the, the drinking water filtered out and cleaner. Uh, right, yeah. exactly. Okay, good. Thank you, Harry. Um, okay, um, any other? Committee reports. Okay, hearing none. Okay, we're up to new business. I don't see that Jed's on here yet, but um, okay, I'm just going to take the new business out of order, but we're still at new business. Um, we already talked about budget planning that we'll do at the next meeting. Um, okay, and the we need to do the library eligibility. Right, right. Um, I was just jumping below it so that in case Jed will give him a few more minutes. Um, there's a lot of housing sessions that are coming up sponsored by, Carlton, who are they sponsored by? I'm sorry, again, please. The housing sessions, sessions on housing. Oh, I can't remember, but I did mail it out that the state there's an organization in the state that's putting a lot of trainings on for how you write <clears throat> and how you write uh, permits. Um, and I'm going to join the one that deals with housing. Uh, and it, it costs, what did I, it's either 20 bucks or- It's 20. 30, 20 mm -hmm. bucks, I've joined the one um, and I'm happy to pay for it myself, but always uh, since we have admin money, Quite frankly, mm -hmm. I'd like to be reimbursed for it. Right. Um, there's a thank you. There's a lot of sessions. There's I don't know, probably well, a dozen, maybe ten or twelve, um, all different parts. We'll we'll send it out to the committee. Um, you can look at it. I think the first one on the front page it says November 11th, but when you go to register, it actually says November 10th. Um, We'll send it out if anybody's interested. Um, my thought is if anybody's interested in registering that where we do have admin money, um, we haven't done a heck of a lot with housing for the CPC. So I think it's beneficial to us that that folks go and then you know, and can bring back to the rest of us what, what's going on. So my thought is I would like to see the CPC pay it out of our admin account for anybody going. Um, they're $20 a session. And the sessions are, are spread out over some time. They're, they're planning ahead at least two months. Right. Right. Thoughts on that or a motion that CPC use its admin funds to pay for anybody that's going to these sessions. So moved. Okay, second. 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 Okay, any discussion? It's, a, it's I will just simply say it's really important for us to stay abreast of what's going on. Correct. Right. That's why I said it, it's beneficial to to us as our community preservation committee to, to know what's out there and what's the latest. I agree. It's, it, there's no, there's no downsides to doing it. I mean, right. just, it's just freshening it up, freshening up on, on what the latest, um, the latest procedures and, and, and issues and just all that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, any other discussion on that to, for CPC to use admin funds. Okay, Josh, roll call. Gina. Yes. Carlton. Yes. Jean. Yes. Bill. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Harry. Yeah. Steve. Yes. Thank you, the motion was approved. Great, thank you. Okay, the library eligibility form 
um, that was sent out. It actually went out when we were supposed to meet last week, but I hope everybody fared okay in the storm. Um, any questions on that? Um, I have one question um, <laughs> about the location for the display of some of these documents. It doesn't say where they're going to be displayed. Uh, I assume in the library, but they mentioned the Bridgewater Historical Society and the, the university and so forth. So are, are they actually going to attempt to create space in the library for some of these uh, exhibits? Uh, my understanding from Jed is, because I've talked with him quite a lot about this, is that in that when you go in the front of the library, you have the main desk on the right, and on the left is a lot of space with magazines, etc. Right. And he's going to try to work on having more of a cultural type display in there. So those might be there. The other thing that they're trying to do, I don't know if people know this. I found out about it not long back. They are in the process of preserving something on the order of 50 movie films that Mrs. Little took on her travels. The library director has, and, and our new archivist have found all sorts of very interesting items that need preservation. And, and hence, the, and they're looking, what they're doing is they're looking for grant money to support that process. And the grant money requires a match and, and the, the application is due on the 7th or 11th, I can't remember which. The 7th. It's eminently due. And I just had a communication with Jed this afternoon and, and somebody that were worried about the fact that they wouldn't have the money in hand. So the idea here is to show that they are eligible for CPA funding for those preservation purposes and then uh, put that, this eligibility and the supporting documentation. I have one letter, I have two letters, I think. And we know Steve has sent, sent an uh, email that said that the Historical Commission would be supporting this too. So they've got several letters to support that, including to us. And so the idea is show that, since we can't get the money in place and they have to show some documentation that it's real, is to attach our eligibility determination to his application for the grant, showing that we are more than willing and say that it is eligible and then he'll have to talk about the application process, et cetera. So I highly encourage us to look at this. And I, I personally believe uh, what they plan to do, which is uh, they have documents, photographs, physical items uh, that are declared to be significant, I believe, Steve, if you correct me if I'm wrong, is the, uh, the where it's declared significant to the history of culture of the town. And so those items are now eligible for preservation. Uh, and it goes on and on in that application, what, what they want to do. It's quite, quite thorough. Um, yes, at our, um, Mrs. Steve, um, at our last historical commission, at our last historical commission meeting, um, that is where we, um, as a committee, historical commission, uh, we um, voted in, on the uh, historical significance of everything that's in the um, historical room. So that that, that was to help um, proceed, help this uh, project um, go through looking for CPA funds. Um, it was the unanimous, and um, I, the historical commission has is fully behind this project. Um, I think what Jed is doing and what Allison is doing our, our, our wonderful projects. And I think that this is, uh, I, I look forward to, um, to helping this out. Okay, great, thank, thank you, Steve. Yeah, it's certainly a worthwhile project. It's in, in, uh, something we should consider very seriously funding. It's uh, important. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, Are they still gonna, apply for it they say that the deadline is imminent on november 7th they are absolutely applying for it he's he's absolutely applying for it we need to get this in place so he can support that with documentation right of course of course right. i just want i wasn't it's sure it's if they're so funds too 
Right. Okay. okay, good. As long as long as they submit it in time, I hope. Yeah, I just good. That's uh, that must I be a lot think, of pressure. I don't think Jed is going to miss it, especially if we get this in. Um, could I? I would move to uh, declare uh, this uh, application for eligibility is in fact eligible. That's I'll a motion. That. Okay. Was that Steve mm -hmm. for a second? Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, Josh roll call. Gina. Yes. Carlton. Yes. Jean. Yes. Bill. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Harry. Yes. Steve. Yes. Thank you, the motion was approved. Okay, great, thank you. I, um, I just have one more question about something Carlton said. You mentioned sure. an archivist uh, in conjunction with the project. Is uh, d does the library have an archivist on board, or is the archivist uh, a consultant, or just out of curiosity? I believe isn't, and I can't remember her name. That Steve, I just Steve can speak to it. Yes, yes, Allison is she. She is uh, an employee of the library. Oh, okay. So, so she and um and she's currently um like she was going. I've met her a few times, very thorough, very, very informed about everything. And um, she was working on the um, archiving some of the uh, historical, uh, the um, military history. And um, she's, I think, um, brought things together that haven't been brought together before. So it's very good. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and she's got a master's in, in uh, library science focused on on uh, um, whatever she's doing, archivist. Good. Mm -hmm. Great. It must be a new high. I just never realized we have an archivist. That's she's been on board for Steve three or four months, five months. Maybe? Yeah, she's oh, relatively new. Since August, I believe. Yeah. Well, that, that's right. certainly a move in the right direction. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, so I'll relay that to, to Jed um, that we've deemed it eligible. Um, okay, next public comment. I wonder Any if we ought to comment? say, sorry, I wonder if we ought to say in the, in the letter that we unanimously voted to consider the uh, proposal uh, eligible. That, good point, I can add that in, Bill. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and, and I'll make sure, and, I'm, and if needed, I'll make sure to have um, the Historical Commission's um, letter of support so that can be added to any information that's needed. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, public comments? Okay, hearing none. Um, last thing, and we're going to have Jean out of here at just about eight o'clock, her deadline. Um, the, our next meeting is scheduled for November 24th, which is also Thanksgiving Eve. In the past, um, we've opted not to, to meet on that night. Um, our in the same light, the December meeting, I think would, would be December 22nd which is Christmas week. So my thought was if we want to combine the two of them and meet December 8th instead, and we combine November and December, just thoughts. Yeah, I, I looked at December 8th, December 15th and the 22nd. I'm glad you mentioned the 22nd because actually I'm not available because I have to celebrate my anniversary. Um, oh, you can celebrate with us, and Merrill <laughs> can sit in on it. Okay, uh, December eighth yeah. is a ZBA evening, and that means we may be able to get a town employee to attend the meeting. And the fifteenth is planning board, and because of uh, Jean's commitments, that's out. Right. That's why I picked the the eighth. Yeah. Um, so I would move to make it the eighth at six thirty. Okay. Second. Second. Anybody? Second. Oh, second. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
All in favor, Josh, roll call. Gina? Yes. Carlton? Yes. Jean? Yes. Bill? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Harry? Yes. Steve? Uh, no, because I won't be able to be there. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. Okay. Gina, I will, I will just say that I think the main agenda item uh, needs to be the budget review and uh, the budget. Right. Uh, uh, what we're going to do in terms of budgeting for FY23, um, we need to get that done sooner rather than later. And I have worked up a lot of data to show, so I'll be prepared to uh, present that information. Okay. Um, and if we can get it out ahead of time to, to the members, that'll be good so they can yeah. take a look at it. As I, I mentioned, I'll see if Tony Salwan, Chief Finance Director, can make the meeting. If he can't, maybe Laurie or uh, Michael. Um, okay. Um, I'm Motion just going to, adjourn. to Okay, I, I was just gonna ask, we have Rich and, Rich and, and forgive me, I can't remember your yeah, like, yeah, name. Right. Anything on the cemeteries to quickly add? No, I'm all set. Yeah. Okay, good. Go ahead. Oh, anything, yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, we've been very, very busy. Thank you for asking us. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow morning with a fencing company who's worked out of Boston and they have done a lot of cemeteries and the historic monuments throughout the state. Um, we had tried to get someone more local, but everybody said that they were either tied up for the next year or two or that they couldn't give estimates because of the fact pricing has gone sky high. But this company, which is a huge company, and they've been great as far as professionalism, they're driving down from Boston tomorrow morning to meet with us at Jennings. Um, we've also um, been negotiating for about six months with one of the top um, preservationists in the country, actually. And he's worked at Bunker Hill and cemeteries and everywhere else. And he's uh, willing to come down if we have the money, actually come up mm. from Connecticut. <laughs> Um, he would like to help us as soon as possible if we can fund a small amount and come for two days before the snow hits us um, so he can do a survey and assessment um, for any funding we need to get. And as well, if we can get him three strong uh, men volunteers, then he would like to teach some local people how to raise stones and do other things, not just the cleaning. You know, we can do the training on the cleaning and other things, but mm -hmm. he actually is very, very educated and can, he brings his own tripod, he brings all those things. So we'd like to get him in for two days between now and Christmas sometime, if we can raise the funds for that. And then for the spring, he's willing to come as many days as he needs, not only for Jennings, but if we can raise the funding for the other four cemeteries, then he's willing to come for them as well. I will, okay, I will that, point out some good news for you guys. Underneath the recent uh, update from the coalition called Administrative Account Common Uses, one of the bullets says uh, professional help, appraisals, consultants, legal right. assistance, general studies. Excellent. Awesome. I will leave it to you as to whether or not you want to apply for administrative funds from us. Okay. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. I do have a question for for any of you. We actually need a little bit of mentoring with some of the different ways to apply for that. Um, Rich has experience, and I've gone with him to all the meetings with another project at Borderland um, that he works has worked on for seven years, eight years. Mm -hmm. um, his third great grandfather's uh, historic farmhouse at the state park. So, but they run their things for what he needs different than we would for a cemetery, mm. historic cemetery. Right. So if there's anyone that wants to mentor me, because I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy to talk with you. I, I'm, I, lots of people here are working full time okay. and, and that kind of thing. I'm more than happy to sit down and talk with you about our application and the process and documents. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me know too, and I'll, I'll try to get it on it too, or Thank anybody you. else too. We also have been this week, I have, I applied for small grants from about seven different places. We're hoping that some of them, most of them are for next spring, but you know how much better than I do, 
how that goes, you have to apply ahead of time for FY uh -huh. 2022 yeah. and others, right? So right. there's others, and I've been talking to some of the um, local businesses, owners and presidents who usually quarterly give to what they feel is, you know, the right kind of nonprofits that represent their town. So that's been constant, you know. Mm -hmm. so hopefully Great. that helps a little. And, you know. Yeah. Steve, wow, seven, seven, seven grants, that's a lot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I've been studying. One of the things that's encouraged me is for three years, I don't have time or money to go after a certificate in fundraising, but I've done fundraising my whole life for nonprofits, just not professionally. I just go out and do what needs to be done and talk oh. with the people, not do all the paperwork, you know? So it's mostly um, individual donors and sponsorships, you know, from people I know, but this is very different now with the cemetery because it's historic and it's town owned. You know, it's very important to us, you know, that we get this done because as you all know, not only with those five cemeteries, but many, many, many more cemeteries throughout New England, you know, if people don't gather together and really help this happen, we're going to lose a lot. Hmm. In Jenny, oh, for example, Carlton, you've probably gone, right, recently? To I know. This, to Jennings Hill? Yes. Yeah, I, been, I took all sorts of photographs a while back. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just say in the interest of time, um, the coalition, the Community Preservation Coalition, if you type in that, you'll find Massachusetts. They have a lot of technical guidance. Mm -hmm. about how to's and what you can do and what you can't do so i would recommend in your spare time you go up there or in your real time mm -hmm. uh, go go up there and take a look at what they have uh, and Stuart Signar, who is the uh, head of it is a very helpful individual right. and yeah they have he's a very helpful they, they also have a historic uh area uh um, writer what do i want to say the they have a person that will come and talk with you about historic stuff. Oh, that's okay. great. That's great. I've actually been doing a lot of research on, on that, actually. And I know the state, unfortunately, a lot of the deadlines are passed or are this week, like the seventh for the other gentleman you said. Um, but the state also is offering up a lot. The competition is high, but, yeah. you know. And we did well, go to the other two cemeteries of the five that you suggested mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for the, that update. Um, okay, anything, any other public comments? Okay, hearing, hearing none. Um, Carlton, I think you before started to, to motion to adjourn. I, under Robert's rules of order, I know it's I don't just, have to. I don't. I can just call. I'll, it. I'll motion. I'll make the motion. But under Robert's rules of order, so other people know, if the chair determines that there are no further things to be discussed, they can declare the meeting ended, and it's official. So Correct. I motion. I move. I don't. And the other thing is, it's I mo. I move. You move. Adjourn. Yep. <laughs> okay. Second. Second. Okay. Josh roll call. Dina. Yes. Carlton. Yes. Thank you. Jean. Yes. Bill. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Harry. Yes. Steve. Yeah. Thank you. The motion was approved. The meeting is adjourned. Okay, Bye -bye. great. I just want to thank everybody for, for their time tonight. Um, it was a very good meeting. Okay. Jean.